next on UCF Sports Night, we continue our basketball previews with a look at the men's team. We examine the youth movement in UCF basketball, and we sit down with Coach Kirk Spira to talk about this year's squad. That and more next on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Hey there and welcome to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. So glad you could join us. This week we continue our basketball previews with a look at the men's basketball team. We'll get to that in a few moments. But first, let's check out the highlights of the week. And we start with the men's golf team as they headed down to Isleworth to participate in one of the biggest college golf events of the year, the Isleworth Collegiate Invitational. A warm and windy weekend in Windermere at the exclusive Isleworth Golf and Country Club. The Knights faced one of the toughest fields outside of the NCAA tournament at the Isleworth Collegiate Invitational. Nuno Enriquez was the top knight. He finished tied for 25th overall at 10 over par. Also, Brad Schneider came in a stroke back of his teammate. Here he saves par with an up and down on number 16. Simon Ward was the only other night in the top 50. UCF finishes tied for 13th as a team at Isleworth as they now head into their winter break. Meanwhile, down in Fort Myers, the women's golf team came up big in the Pat Bradley Invitational hosted by FIU. UCF finished in third overall. Freshman Valentina Fontaine finished in second place in the medalist standings at five under par. Katie Detlifson also finished tied for eighth at two over. Back at the soccer complex, men's soccer took on conference foe Kentucky and the Knights got a tremendous performance from Sean Doyle. who picked up eight saves in goal for the Knights, just one short of a career high. This was a tough battle, scoreless into the second half. The Knights were trailing one to nothing when Ben Hunt got a run at it on the left side and the gorgeous pass across to fellow New Zealander Nick Robeson who plants it in the net to tie the game. This thriller would eventually go to overtime, but in the end, Kentucky would escape the soccer complex with a 2-1 victory. Two nights later, a big night for the eighth-ranked women's team as they could wrap up the outright CUSA regular season title with a win over Southern Miss. And it was senior night at UCF as more than 1,000 fans paid tribute to seven senior nights. And then it was time to get down to business on the field. Barely two minutes in, Becca Thomas fires from the top of the box for the Knights' first goal of the game, her sixth of the year, and she and the seniors run over to celebrate with their injured fellow senior, Brianna Schooley. This one would be a rout. Courtney Witten got into the act in the 32nd minute with her ninth goal of the season. And then Katie Jackson picked up a tally to make it 3 0 at the break. Nicolette Radovcic would add the final marker, and the Knights go on to the 4 0 win, and they clinch the Conference USA regular season championship for the third time in five years and for the first time outright. They finish with a school record 10 conference wins. On the road, volleyball had a tough match against UAB. The Blazers picked up the win in four, despite 15 kills and 11 digs from Erin Campbell in her first match back from injury. In Dallas, men's soccer ran to a 3-3 draw with SMU. The Knights got a goal in the first minute from Malcolm Reed and later tallies from Jeroen Bacher and Nick Robeson. Sean Doyle picked up a career-high 10 saves. Back at home, softball finished up their fall season with the UCF Fall Invitational. The Knights dominated their pair of games this past weekend, beating Rollins and Bethune-Cookman by a combined score of 17 to nothing. Mary Helen Tyler had a couple of RBI doubles in the Rollins game, and Christina DeMello gave up just one hit on the day. Men's tennis was at the USF tournament, and Mark Rocafort and Blaze Schwartz provided a big highlight, winning doubles flight one with a 3-0 record. Cross country was in Houston for the Conference USA Championships. Jamie Rispecki took home CUSA Outstanding Senior of the Year honors. She was one of three Knights in the top 50 in the individual standings. Collectively, the Knights finished in ninth place. Up in Memphis, the volleyball team saw five players hit for double-digit kills, but it was not enough as the Knights fell to the Tigers in five thrilling sets. Aaron Campbell led with 16 kills, and Lauren Williams had 15 and a 462 hit percentage. Back at home, Sunday night football at the Bright House as UCF and Marshall took to the field. The Knights trailed 20-7 in the fourth, but after a Bryn Harvey score, Bruce Miller forces a fumble, and the Knights get the ball back with under two minutes to go. Seven plays later, Brett Hodges hits Rocky Ross from a yard out with just 17 seconds left on the clock, 
and that gave the Knights a thrilling 21-20 victory over the Herd on national television. And of course, for more news, scores, and information on every UCF sport, log on to UCFathletics.com, your 24-7 online home for UCF sports. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we get a preview of the men's basketball team, and it's a very young team this season. We talk with some of the players about the youth movement with the Knights when UCF Sports Night returns. Night fans, it's time to armor up in black with your UCF Knights on Saturday, November 14th, as they host the Houston Cougars at noon on homecoming weekend. More information at 407-UCF-1000 and at UCFathletics.com. Basketball is back. Open for three. Got it, Isaac Sosa. Be a part of all the big games at a small price with season tickets starting at just $79. Ramsa floats it up. It rolls in. Ball game over. Season tickets are on sale now. To reserve your seat today, call 407-UCF-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com. Armor up. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Last year, UCF's men's basketball team rode on the strong shoulders of Conference USA's Player of the Year, Jermaine Taylor. Well, after a season for the ages, Jermaine graduated from UCF and is now in the NBA with the Houston Rockets. Left behind is a group of very young and very talented players who are eager to prove themselves. But the Knights are not daunted this year, for they know that what they lack in experience they make up for in talent and determination. We get a look at the youth movement in UCF men's basketball in our Sports Night Spotlight. Uh, I don't think there's going to be one person that's going to replace Jermaine, obviously. Uh, I think it's going to be collectively as a team. Everyone has to give everything they have. You know, we have to play defense as a team. We have to be able to swing the ball, get the open shot. So it's definitely as a team. A lot of people have to step up this season. You know, losing Jermaine, we don't have the go-to score, but this year uh, we got to have four or five guys stepping up every night, so it's going to be more balanced, but I think that's what we're going to use to our benefit. Well, it all starts in the off-season, uh, the workout, weightlifting, conditioning, and all that stuff. We challenge ourselves to, you know, stay together and not, like, you know, not cave in. It's really hard when, we're, when you know, when the workouts come, because people, are, like, start to struggle and they start complaining and stuff, so that's when we all get together and, like, challenge each other to be better because the season is coming, we don't want to be a 500 team. That's our mindset. Well, that's the thing. I mean, last year we were so young, so a lot of the younger guys, they got to play, uh, you know, a, a lot of minutes. By putting a lot of minutes under our belt, I think we knew a lot and we had to grow really fast. So it was really hard for me because I really didn't have time to, time to develop or just, you know, grow up. It was kind of, they threw me right into the fire and I had to uh, do well under pressure. Coaches look at me as a veteran, not really a sophomore. So since we're very young, we have a lot of young guys. 
he wants the veterans to teach to the young guys, you know. And even though I'm fairly young, I'm a sophomore, and he still wants me to be, you know, act like a veteran, like a leader somehow on the court and try to do the right thing so, they, so the young guys can see, try to be an example. I feel like I've helped a lot of the freshman guys along. You know, this is my fourth year in college, so just trying to portray to them how hard you really have to play. And you know, it's not like high school anymore. And if we can prepare them for that now, rather than waiting for the first game, that's going to be a great thing for us. Individually, obviously, everyone's worked on their games. Everyone came back. Uh, DJ's gotten a lot stronger. Cooper's lost 40 pounds. You know, he's been doing really well on that. I think that we're all on the same page right now, and it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, we're not going to use being young as an excuse, and we're not looking at it like that. We're just going to come into the season, just try to play as hard as we can every game, and we really expect to, you know, win a lot of games this year. I know we know that last year we lost uh, eight out of the last ten games, and you know we struggled a lot. And we're not trying to do that this year. Every game we're going to fight. I mean, I don't think there's not going to be one game that you know we're just going to give up or we're just going to let a team beat us. I think every single game we will fight and. We're going to try and come away with a win because that's, that's what it's about. Well, UCF's men's basketball schedule begins with an exhibition at UCF Arena on Wednesday, November 4th against St. Leo. The regular season slate begins on Friday the 13th of November when the Knights take on UMass at UCF Arena. For more information, visit UCFAthletics.com. Don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we sit down with the team's head coach, Kirk Spira, to get his take on his team's upcoming season. That and more when we return. Night fans, season tickets for your UCF men's basketball team are available now. More information at 407-UCF-1000 and at UCFAthletics.com. The Florida Interactive Entertainment Academy. Don't just get into the gaming industry, lead it. Orlando, it's time to armor up. UCF basketball is back. Open for three. Got it, Isaac Sosa. Be a part of all the big games at a small price, with season tickets starting at just $79. Ramsa floats it up, it rolls in. Season tickets are on sale now. To reserve your seat today, call 407-UCF-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com. Armor up. Game day getaway. Hey, Orlando, it's time to get away with your UCF Knights. You won't want to miss a minute of the action in Bright House Network Stadium this season. Single game tickets are on sale now. Don't be left out. Armor up, Knights fans. Call 407-823-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com for your tickets today. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night, and joining me now, the head man from UCF men's basketball, head coach Kirk Spira, joining us for the first time this year. Coach, how are you? Doing well, Jeff. How are you? Doing well. Thank you so much for taking some time with us. You know, last year we had, it was, it was such an interesting season. It, there were so many good things that happened. This year, what kind of a team are we going to see from UCF? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know that any of us really know what kind of team we're going to see. Uh, you're going to see a lot of youthfulness, a lot of excitement. Uh, we've got uh, players that are very skilled, very good basketball intelligence, uh, but they're still growing and learning and, and trying to make that transition for some of them from high school to college and, and a high level of college basketball. And then some sophomores that uh, you know are still in the process of developing their games individually and collectively. So uh, it'll be a, it'll be an exciting year watching these guys grow together. 
You had two seniors who were such huge contributors last year. Jermaine Taylor, of course, speaks for himself. Kenny Zondervan as well. They're gone now. So who fills that leadership role on your team? Uh, you know, that's an interesting question, too. Uh, you know, certainly you look at your upperclassmen in, in Drew and A.J. Tyler and, and Taylor Young, and, and those are the only three upperclassmen that we have. So they have to set the tone uh, every day in practice. But, uh, you know, some of the other guys and, and your point guards have to take a leadership role. So obviously uh, A.J. Rumsa has got to step it up in, in that regard. And, and uh, but you know we've got to you know some, somebody's got to develop a little personality, uh, you know take some initiative uh, to step out there and be a leader and throw themselves kind of out there on the limb a little bit. And, and uh, but we'll see who matures into that role. You touched upon this a little bit, and and I wanted to ask you a little bit more about it. You know your only senior on this team is your son Drew. So how much of a role is he going to have in, with the team this year? Well, I think he plays a vital role because he knows exactly what we want to do in drills or what our offensive scheme is, our defensive scheme. So he can talk to the guys uh, you know, on the side of the court uh, with all these young guys. He's a, you know, another source of information for them. If they're not sure uh, what to do or on a particular set or a particular play, I mean, he's a great source of information and he can talk to them over the apartments and that type of thing outside of, of the basketball practice and and he's already sat down with a couple of guys you know right now plays and that type of thing so I think he's very valuable in that regard and certainly he's going to help us uh, you know in timeouts on the bench uh, you know locker room at uh, halftime those types of situations again because of his knowledge of what we do. The sophomores this year you know they got so much playing experience last year as freshmen uh, now they've had to step up into a bigger role. How have they adjusted over the summer? Well, I think they've made good progress. Uh, you know, I think all of them. Uh, you know, A.J. Rumsa has really worked hard on his shooting and worked on his body balance and things like that that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, will help him be more consistent. Uh, you know, Isaac Sosa had a great summer in playing for his Puerto Rican national team in, in uh, the World Championships in New Zealand. I think P.J. Gaynor has made uh, tremendous progress. Uh, you know, from one year to the next, uh, you know, Cuba has uh, lost a lot of weight and has been able to get up and down the floor a lot better in, in uh, transition. Uh, David uh, Diakite is, uh, you know, going to get a red shirt a uh, year uh, back uh, from last year in his injury, and he's back from his injury uh, healthy and, and making progress. And so, you know, I think each of them in their own way has shown improvement, and, and uh, certainly they're going to carry a huge load just because uh, we don't have that many upperclassmen. Yeah. And then you talk about those young freshmen as well. You know, we, last time we talked, you know, we got kind of got the rundown of them. And now that you've had them in the system for a few months and you've seen what they can do on the floor, how well have they adjusted to uh, the system? Well, they're making that adjustment. Uh, you know, the thing that, and they've done a nice job, but the thing that's hard for them is that they don't have, you know, three, four seniors, you know, to, that have been through it for four years and they know what it takes and they know the intensity that you have to practice with every day. They don't have enough people on that end to help them learn quickly enough, you know, and so that'll be uh, something that, uh, that we'll have to get through in, in regards to their growth process. Last question for you, the schedule. You got some very interesting opponents, for, and this, is, this being the second youngest team in the country, they're going to have to grow up real fast. Well, they really are. We're going to throw them into the fire. You know, certainly we open up at home uh, on November 13th with UMass, and they've got a great tradition and history. And uh, then you've got UConn and Notre Dame and Auburn and Mississippi, and you go right on down the line. But uh, it's, an ex it's going to be an exciting team, you know, and uh, the schedule's challenging, uh, you know, and we're going to have a lot of great teams coming into the arena, and uh, you better get your tickets in the lower bowl. They're going fast, so uh, there may not be many left. So if you don't have a, a season, ticket in the lower bowl, you might want to get it. All right. Head Coach Kirk Spiro, UCF Men's Basketball, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck in the season. We'll catch you before uh, New Year's Day. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we got some news and notes for you and also our plays of the week. Don't go away. We're back in a moment. Night fans, season tickets for your defending Conference USA champion women's basketball team are available now. More information at 407-UCF-1000 and at UCFAthletics.com. Orlando, it's time to armor up. UCF basketball is back. Open for three. Got it, Isaac Sosa. Be a 
part of all the big games at a small price, with season tickets starting at just $79. Ramsa floats it up, it rolls in! Ball game Season tickets are on sale now. To reserve your seat today, call 407-UCF-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com. Armor up. Game day getaway. Hey, Orlando, it's time to get away with your UCF Knights. You won't want to miss a minute of the action in Bright House Network Stadium this season. Single game tickets are on sale now. Don't be left out. Armor up, Knights fans. Call 407-823-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com for your tickets today. Check out all the latest UCF action on UCF Sports Night. Join us as we recap all the highlights of the week from every UCF sport, plus all the features and interviews that take you inside the world of UCF athletics. If it's UCF sports, it's on UCF Sports Night. You can catch UCF Sports Night all season long on UCF TV and also on Bright House Sports Network and Sun Sports. Check your local listings for details. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Plays of the week are coming up in a moment, but first, let's have a look at some news and notes from the week. The women's soccer team is moving up the national polls again. The Knights are ranked eighth in the latest NSCAA coaches poll. It marks the first time since October 1992 that the Knights have cracked the top 10. Head coach Amanda Cromwell's team now heads out to Dallas for the Conference USA Championship Tournament November 4th through the 8th. And the Knights' A.J. Guyton has been named the Bright House Student Athlete of the Week this past week. Guyton posted a remarkable performance at Rice last Saturday with three catches for 103 yards, including a 76-yard touchdown from Brett Hodges on the first offensive snap. Guyton also threw a 32-yard touchdown to Kamar Aiken on a reverse pass. In the process, he became the first Knight to throw and catch a touchdown in the same game since UCF Hall of Famer and current assistant coach Sean Becton did it back in 1990. Time for our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Play number three for men's soccer. Watch the gorgeous pass from Ben Hunt to Nick Robeson, who finds the back of the net against Kentucky. A gorgeous play by the New Zealanders against the Wildcats. Play number two, football against Marshall, 17 seconds to go. After a miraculous turnover, Brett Hodges hits Rocky Ross from a yard out, and that gives the Knights a huge victory over the thundering herd of Marshall on national television at Bright House Network Stadium. But play number one belongs to women's soccer on senior night against Southern Miss. Becca Thomas with the sweet turnaround fires the shot and rattles the cage. And the best part right here, she and the other seniors on the field go over to their fellow senior, Brianna Schooley, who missed virtually the whole season with an injury and celebrate with her on the sideline. An emotional night for the number eight ranked team in the nation. And those are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. The sports schedule at UCF really heats up in November as we look at the week ahead. It starts on Wednesday with the first basketball game of the season at UCF Arena as the men's team takes to the floor to face St. Leo at 7 p.m. in an exhibition game. Meanwhile, the postseason begins for women's soccer as they head to Dallas for the Conference USA Championship hosted by SMU. The Knights have a bye in the first round, so they won't have to play until the semifinals on Friday. You can catch that game live on UCFAthletics.com. The championship game is scheduled for Sunday at 1 p.m., and it is televised on CBS College Sports. Back on campus on Friday, women's volleyball has a big match with Tulsa. Things get underway at 7 p.m., and you can see it live on UCFAthletics.com. Women's tennis is also in action. They head up to Tallahassee to take part in the FSU tournament. That event goes through Sunday. This week, the baseball team concludes its fall season with the Black and Gold World Series. 
The first two games are in the morning on Tuesday and Thursday, and the last intra-squad game will be on Friday night at Jay Bergman Field. Saturday, the football team has a big road test as they head out to Austin to face the Texas Longhorns in their final non-conference game of the regular season. It's an early kickoff for UCF, noon Eastern time, and you can see it live on Fox Sports Florida or hear it on the Knights' flagship station, 740 The Game. Later that same night on campus, the men's soccer team plays its final home game of the regular season against Tulsa. You can see that game live on UCFAthletics.com. And Sunday is a big day at UCF Arena. It all starts at 1 p.m. when the volleyball team hosts senior night in the venue. They take on SMU in that match. You can see it live on UCFAthletics.com. Then when that's over, head across the hall to the arena to see the women's basketball team play their exhibition game against St. Leo. Tip-off there is set for 3 p.m. On Thursdays, tune in for the George O'Leary Call-In Show presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Join the coach and the voice of the Knights, Mark Daniels, as they talk UCF football every Thursday, live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes. You can hear the show on the Knights' flagship station, 740 The Game, or at UCFAthletics.com. Also on Sunday, tune in for UCF Sports Today with Coach O'Leary, presented by Holler Classic. Join the coach and Pat Clark for insight, analysis, and in-depth features at noon on West 2 and also throughout the week on UCF TV, Bright House Sports Network, and Sun Sports. And a reminder, you can catch UCF Sports Night every Tuesday at 8 p.m. on UCF TV. The show also airs throughout the week on Bright House Sports Network and Sun Sports. Check your local listings for details. And for all the latest news, scores, and features from every UCF sport, log on to UCFAthletics.com, your 24-7 online home for UCF sports. And of course, if you want to catch this edition again or you want to see any of our archived editions of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want online. All you've got to do is visit UCF TV's website, which is www.ucf.tv. Well, that'll do it for us for this week here on UCF Sports Night. We'll catch you again next week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thanks for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV.